There's one type of training that has taken the cycling world by storm in recent years. Heat training. In this video, I'm going to break down everything you need to know about heat training and show you how to use it to unlock your full potential. We'll dive into what heat training really is, the science behind it, how the pros are using it to crush their goals, and I'll even share some personal tips to help you maximize your performance. Short summarized is, heat training for cyclists involves training in hot conditions to help your body adapt to heat stress, improve endurance, and boost your ability to perform in extreme temperatures. It's no surprise that many riders find it fascinating, and some want to explore it on a deeper level. Before we dive into the pro's secret, should we take a look at the science? A bit boring, I know, but hold on, it will go fast. In a landmark study from 2010, researchers explored how a 10-day heat acclimation protocol impacted performance in both hot and cool conditions. Cyclists trained in a heated chamber set to 40 degrees Celsius with 30% humidity, completing two 45-minute sessions a day at 50% of their VO2 max. The results were eye-opening showing the significant impact heat training can have on your overall performance. Results showed a 5 to 8% improvement in VO2 max and similar gains in time trial performance under both environmental conditions. Heat acclimation also increased plasma volume, 6.5%. The latest study, which was published in 2020, explored how a five-week heat training protocol affects physiological adaptations and performance in elite cyclists. Participants trained in a heat chamber set at 37.8 degrees Celsius with each session started with a five-minute warm-up followed by 50 minutes of cycling at approximately 45% of the power output, corresponding to a blood lactate concentration of 4 millimoles per liter, five times weekly. And for a person with a lactate threshold at 400 watts is approximately 180 watts. The power output was adjusted between sessions based on perceived exertion ratings. The training targeted low-intensity cycling to simulate heat stress. The results showed a 4.6% increase in hemoglobin mass among heat-trained cyclists, indicating enhanced oxygen-carrying capacity. Additionally, these cyclists exhibited lower blood lactate levels during prolonged exercise, suggesting improved endurance. These changes were attributed to heat-induced plasma volume expansion and stimulation of erythropoietin EPO, production. Okay, now that we've covered the many benefits of heat training, let's take a look at how the pros do it and their philosophies and how you can implement it in real life. Because, let's be honest, both you and I know it's challenging to follow a five-week heat training protocol, right? One rider who frequently uses heat training is the powerhouse Jonas Abrahamson from Uno X Mobility. In a recent podcast, he revealed that heat training played a key role in his success at this year's Tour de France. Let's take a look what he had to say. Kanske som inte så många vet kanske, men en av huvudgrunden att jag gjorde så bra de två första etapperna var för det att det var ju 36-37 grader. Och så jag sitter på bad här i åtta dagar i sträck och kört värmeträning och haft 39 feber. Men alla de antat starkare klättrarna, de fick ju smäll efter smäll efter smäll för de var inte vant att cykla 37 grader. Jag hade ju cyklat värmeträning hemma och tillpassat mig värmen. Och hade jag inte gjort det så hade jag nog aldrig haft den värme eller den klättertröja eller den spurtröja i Tour de France då. Så det handlar om att göra tiltak så varför när det är varmt ute så är det viktigt att akklimatisera sig varför när det närmar sig 40 grader. Så jag är väldigt glad för att göra det. If we dive into his data we could see that he performed a total 10 sessions in the month before the tour. And the last one was four days from the first stage. Each session was 50 minutes at 230 watts, around 50 to 60% of FTP, with a high cadence of 100 RPM. Just a small quick note. First, I want to thank all new subscribers and views on the last couple of videos. I appreciate it a lot. One big goal for me is to hit 1,000 subscribers. So if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to me. Matthias Reck is one of the head coaches at Little Trek. And in a Swedish podcast, he said that there are three main methods for heat acclimation. Heat baths, saunas, or heat training on the bike. He says it's important to note that overusing these methods, such as practicing them daily for five weeks straight, can have negative effects and may backfire. A significant benefit comes from combining altitude and heat training. 
but this approach is only recommended for experienced athletes who are already accustomed to both methods. It is not suitable for beginners. For heat training on the bike, sessions typically last around 50 minutes, with the goal of raising the body temperature to approximately 38.5 degrees Celsius. A standard protocol could be two to three sessions per week over several weeks, and then a point bet with five to six sessions per week when this space is given. Saunas and heat baths are also effective alternatives. Heat baths may provide additional benefits because the body is unable to cool itself as effectively when submerged in water. For a heat bath, the water temperature should be maintained between 40 to 42 degrees Celsius. If using a sauna, opt for a lower temperature and aim to sit for longer durations to achieve similar benefits. Another pro cyclist who has been open with his heat training is Harry Sweeney, who represents Yef Education Easy Post and also makes good content on YouTube. In Jack Haig's podcast, The Rest Day with Jack Haig, he said this. I'd been doing heat already for like the whole month leading up to the tour. Heat so, training? Yeah, so I'd been like in Sierra, then training here, middle of the day, real down low. Then I was doing hot baths every day. And then I didn't make the tour, I had like a couple of weeks off and then I started again straight away. So like every day after training, like 30 or 40 minutes in a 42 degree bath and like up to your neck and just sit in there and like suffer. And I did that every day until San Seb, then came back and then did it two more days and then we went off there. And honestly, I didn't find the heat too bad. So I think it really works. Okay, because I also asked my teammates whether they'd done any heat prep and whether it, <laughs> they thought it had worked or not. And some of them said that they weren't sure if it had made a difference. What was the protocol? So uh, I think Torsten had done some heat training on the ergo. So yeah. with like lots of clothes, rain jackets, etc. And then uh, Camel had done the heat baths, yeah. similar to you, but maybe he didn't do them uh, long enough. And then also he's... Yeah not like a climber so <laughs> he's gonna suffer yeah. regardless <laughs> i think with the the ergo i think the mental cost for the gain is the ratio is way off whereas yeah. i think the bath is a little bit more even like the bath is still one of the worst things you can do because you can't you sweat but like you're already wet you can't cool down yeah. so i think i feel like it's over faster and like when you hop out you have like an endorphin rush a little bit but i think when you do the ergo it's just every day like wears you down mentally so i think that has a lot to do with it too did you need to change your train with the hot bath because you do no, that a lot no. by the sounds of it like every day it's no like... i didn't change anything i that's the, the benefit i guess yeah. is because you do your training and like when you get home you still switch off but then you just like you have your meal or you wait a bit and then just hop straight in and like I just want to watch YouTube or something yeah. in there and just relax. Yeah, because uh, I, I did quite a bit of uh, sauna work as well. Yeah. And I do it similar where I do it and normally like after dinner when my son's gone to sleep, I use the sauna then and then I do like yeah, 30 minutes in the sauna at yeah. like 80, 85 degrees. And yeah. It's kind of enough. According to Lotto DSDNY's coach Jan Boone, heat training is often performed in the winter to help athletes adapt faster to hot conditions during the summer. This type of training not only improves performance in the heat, but also increases blood plasma volume, which is beneficial in cold conditions also. During indoor heat training, athletes typically wear multiple layers of clothing and avoid using fans to create a hotter environment. The main objective is to raise the core body temperature, which is monitored using core temperature sensors. These sessions aim to increase core temperatures to approximately 38.5, to 39 degrees Celsius, with efforts typically set at around 50% of FTP, functional threshold power. A common protocol for heat training involves five sessions per week for five weeks. Cedric Baki Christopherson, a cyclist from the Tour de Titima and a former member of the Norwegian Triathlon National Team, is a strong advocate for heat training. He highlights its benefits, including heat acclimation and increased blood plasma volume. Cedric trains in a heat chamber, typically riding in just bib shorts at a room temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. His sessions start with steady riding, gradually building intensity. He drinks 0.5 to 1 liter of fluids during training, taking small sips to avoid cooling his body. A typical session lasts 50 minutes, beginning with steady riding. He often schedules heat training as his second session of the day 
cutting the final hour of his outdoor ride short to train indoors instead. His protocol involves seven to eight heat training sessions as preparation for an important race, which he finds highly effective. In this video, I've shared insights from pro cyclists, and now I'll provide some basic recommendations for structuring your heat training period. My goal is to keep things simple and help you get into peak shape for an important event, just like Cedric and Jonas do. Personally, I find it difficult, and I know many others do too, to commit to five sessions per week for five weeks straight. So, here's a more manageable approach. Start by identifying your race day and then work backwards by two to four days. Your last heat session should fall somewhere in that window. From there, plan seven to 10 heat sessions leading up to the event. If you have a rest day, consider going to the sauna or heat bath instead. For each heat training session, I recommend aiming for 50 minutes. Begin with five to 10 minutes at a higher intensity, like low zone three. I'll make him make some training programs if it would be appreciated. If you have a core temperature sensor, aim to reach a body temperature of 38.5 to 39 degrees Celsius. Throughout the session, gradually reduce your power output. Treat this heat training as your second session of the day and replace your last outdoor hour with it. Don't add it on top of your regular training. If you choose a heat bath, set the water temperature to 40 degrees Celsius and stay in for 30 to 40 minutes. For sauna sessions, aim for a temperature of 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, again staying for 30 to 40 minutes. Throughout this period, it's crucial to listen to your body. Heat training adds extra load, and it's important to gauge how you feel. There's no pressure to do it. Think of it as an experiment. If you find it benefits your performance, that's fantastic. Here are some key highlights and important things from this video you can bring with you in the future. There are benefits with heat training. You perform better in the heat and get more plasma volume, which can lead to increased threshold power and VO2 max. There are different approaches and methods and everyone is unique. Try, test, and experiment what works for you. That was everything I had to say in this video. I hope you find it interesting. If you have any questions, can you drop them below? And I will do my best to answer. All best from Prime Cycling.